and welcome back yes now this week we've got a bit of a dilemma on my latest project i've only got one pin one gpio pin it's um a gpio pin it's input output pin and it's the last one and i've got to drive this dual led with it these although there are two pins on this led it's actually two leds in one yes indeed i've got a dual LED red and green in this one little tiny LED so basically one's connected one way and one's connected the other way so if you put positive on one lead and negative on the other it'll go green and if you swap the power around it will go red ideal for sort of a status indicator isn't it with just two leads except I've only got one pin because there are there's a conventional way of wiring this up and then there's the well uh, i guess the ralph bacon way of wiring it up yeah i know are you intrigued uh, come back come back yes well we'll go through the circuit which is extremely simple and find out how i did it i want to give a big shout out to jlc pcb and there's a few things i want to bring to your attention first of all as you can see there's industrial 3d printing let's have a closer look at that shall we 3D printing is very easy, as it shows you here. Add your files to their website, make a click on which product it is you want it to be made from, and then just follow the directions on screen. Really, really easy. You can make shapes like these as well without owning a 3D printer yourself. You really need to give it a try. And to learn more about their 3D printing capability, watch the video with the charming Naomi who will walk you through exactly how their system works. Additive manufacturing is just another word for 3D printing. Now here's a thing that will make you smile. Purple PCBs. Yes, I've ordered one of these and I've used it in one of my projects. As you can see here, it looks very nice. And now they've got multiple colours. So yeah, choose the colour that suits your project the best. And don't forget the free assembly for your PCB. And it's $2 for one to four pieces, regardless of the colour of the board. You can't go wrong with that. Why not have a look at them now? Now, conventionally, if you've got a dual LED or bicolor LED, you'd use two pins on the Arduino or whatever microcontroller you're using. Uh, in the same way I'm showing in this diagram here. So you've got arbitrarily picked 9 and 10 here. Um, so when 9 is high, so you've set it as an output pin, set it to high, digital right high, set this one as an output pin, but set it to low, it means current can flow from pin 9 through the top LED, because obviously current can only go that way, through an LED down here, through the current limiting resistor, and to ground by this other pin. And conversely, when this pin goes high and this one goes low, then current goes the opposite way around, but lights up the other LED. Great, fantastic. What could possibly be simpler? Well, there are a couple of fly in the ointments here, not least the fact that you're using two valuable pins to light up, you know, a silly little LED indicator. Yeah, all right, maybe not quite so silly. The one on my smart uh, heater controller down here is anything but silly. It really does tell me what's going on, but I wouldn't want to use up two pins for it. But there's another issue. If you've noticed the current limiting resistor down here, which I've arbitrarily assigned 220 ohms, it's safe. Um, doesn't work very well because in this bicolor LED, red and green, you will find that the red appears fine at 220, but the green appears dim. It doesn't want a 220, it really wants a 180. So what do you do? Put in a 200 and you sort of overdrive the red a bit, make it too bright, and the green still isn't bright enough. How are you going to put two resistors in here, one for that one and one for that one? Yeah, and even if the, um, the the LEDs themselves needed exactly the same current, which they don't, um, your eye says that one colour is brighter to you than the other. Now, the textbooks say green is brighter to us than the red. Whether that's true or not for everybody, I don't know. But anyway, the point is you really want to be able to tweak the individual current going to those LEDs, don't you? Hmm. So the two-pin GPIO solution is a sort of a, a rough and ready halfway house, isn't it? But I've only got one GPIO anyway, so how am I going to do it? Now, the code that we're going to be using just to test this LED out is as simple as you might think. We've defined our LED here on GPIO 9, which happens to be PWM capable. 
Um, in the setup, we simply say that LED pin is an output pin, and then we set it alternatively low and then high with a one second gap in between. I might set this to 5000 as we go through the program just to slow things down a bit. But that's all it's doing. So current either flows into the Arduino when it's low or out of the Arduino when it's high. That's, that's all there is to it with a single pin. Simples. So here we have a working flashing LED going from red to green, which shows both, both LEDs are being switched on and off. And you think, that's it, great, done and dusted. Well, that was a short video. What's, ah, yes, we do have a little bit of a problem here. Now, actually, it's, it's half a problem because if this circuit were running from a, you know, a wall wart, as, as this one's running here, look, okay? If it's running from a wall wart and you don't intend running it from batteries ever, and let's face it, you wouldn't run this project with this board from batteries ever. But uh, say your project ran just from a wall wart, you can just leave it like this and pretend that there isn't any problem, okay? But uh, there is an underlying um, potential problem if you're running this in batteries. So this is the conventional solution when you've got a single GPIO pin, a bi or dual color LED, and you want about to turn each one of those on and off independently. All right, so you've got VCC at the top, you've got ground down the bottom, and your GPIO pin here. So what happens is, if you set the Arduino GPIO pin high, it's an output pin, remember, you set it high, so current can flow from it up to about, well, if you're really going to push it, 40 milliamps, but 20 is a max, and for an LED you don't need anywhere near that. Current flows out from the GPIO pin through this diode, because it cannot go through this one, it's blocked, so it goes from here, through here, out to here, and goes, right, where's my nearest route to ground? Well, it's down here through the 220 ohm resistor. And bang, this LED is now lit. Brilliant. If, however, you set this pin low, then current from VCC will flow through this 180 ohm resistor into here. Can't go this way because it's blocked. It goes this way now, and then it's sunk by your Arduino to ground internally, and therefore this LED lights up. Brilliant. I mean, there's two important advantages of this solution. One is that you can choose two individual resistors for the red and green, so get the brightness or the relative brightness about the same. And uh, of course, you're only using one pin. Brilliant. So is that it? Is that the end of the video? Have we have we got to the end already? No, because there's a drawback to this particular solution, which is recognised. Everybody who's done this sort of circuit before knows that there's a potential drawback. If you're running on a wall wart, it probably doesn't matter. But look where the VCC is at the top here. That's connected to this resistor, 180 ohms. Yeah, fine. OK, you can get about, I don't know, 12, 14 milliamps through that. Comes down here, sees another resistor, OK, 220 ohms, and it sees ground. So even with nothing happening here and no LED lit, current is still going to flow from VCC through these two resistors to ground. Now, it's not a huge amount of current. It's a few milliamps, but current is nonetheless flowing through here. If you're running off a wall wart, you probably don't care. It's not worth the time and effort to try and sort this out. Um, because well, what's another few milliamps amongst the many hundred you're probably using from that power supply? But if you're running on battery, it's a very different thing altogether, isn't it? Because whilst this part of the circuit is powered up, you're going to continually drain the battery with a few milliamps, and that's a no-no. So how can we stop the current flowing anywhere except through the correct LED, whether it's from here that way or from VCC, that way, without any current sort of flowing down this leg. Is there a solution? So how do we stop the power leaking to ground that way and ensuring it only goes through the LED? Hmm. Yes, there's a solution to the problem of current flowing from VCC through two resistors to ground. And the solution is to put a small MOSFET here and a small MOSFET here. Shock horror, you're thinking, surely not, Ralph, have you gone mad? You're going to put two MOSFETs into this circuit just to stop a few milliamps flowing. 
Well, a few milliamps in a battery powered project is absolutely required. I mean, you, you need to save that. So you're thinking, not a MOSFET, surely they're all big and clunky and stop right there. Stop right there. We are talking about something like an SI4599. I've used it many times before. I've got a whole drawer of them over there because they are so useful. They have an extremely low um, on resistance, RDS on. They can carry huge amounts of currents, but like six amps. And they are just very, very cheap, less than a dollar. I'll show you in a minute. And they are tiny, 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 tiny little things. So tiny that you have to actually use a tiny little breakout board when you're playing with them on a breadboard or something like that. I'll show you in a minute. So although we've drawn in two transistors like this, it's child's play to use, believe me. So just bear with me while I describe the circuit. The P channel will allow current to flow from left to right. This resistor, which is connecting the gate of this P channel this way to VCC, ensures it stays off. If you take this resistor off here, you'll find that current starts leaking almost immediately. And if you touch the gate with your finger, you'll find that current flows an awful lot more. It's that sensitive. So we need the 100k just to turn it off. And no current flows this way. It just brings the voltage on the gate high. So no current flows. The converse happens down here with the N channel MOSFET. Here we're bringing the gate to ground normally for a 10k resistor. The exact values aren't that important, but you know, of that ilk. It just makes sure that this transistor is also switched off. Great. So under normal circumstances, without anything happening on the Arduino, both transistors are off. Now, when the Arduino says, right, I'm going to light up one of these LEDs, it goes, right, I'm going to set this pin um, as an output pin, and I'm going to set it high. So what happens? Well, the current wants to flow down here through this diode, because obviously it can't go through this one because it's blocked. It goes through here to here. And it goes, where's my nearest route to ground? Well, there's a resistor to, oh, I'm blocked. Or is it? Because this is now high, this is also turned on this transistor. So there is a route from here through this transistor down to ground. Great. So what happens is current flows exactly as you might expect in this way. Brilliant. It's on. But nothing is happening up this end because this, remember, is still off. When this is high, this stays high. It's already been brought high from this VCC. So nothing happens here. The current is blocked. OK, so when the Arduino says, right, I want to turn the other LED on now, I want to bring this low so current can flow into the Arduino, the VCC goes to this transistor here and it goes, is this switched on or not? Well, this is low now, so it's brought this leg of the gate here low. So yes, it is switched on. So current will flow through here, through the transistor, through here, through this LED and into the Arduino. Voila. And nothing can flow down here because this transistor is most definitely off because its gate is not high. It's low, remember, from here. So that's it. You've, you've now blocked all current paths with that little itty bitsy SI4599 or equivalent. And it's child's play to use. I think, it's, I think it's about time we saw some demos on the breadboard. So this is the final circuit then with that MOSFET, or pair of MOSFETs in fact, all plugged in. As you can see, red and green. Yeah, I know it's difficult to see. Actually, it's easier looking at the reflection, isn't it? Uh, red and green pulsing on and off every five seconds. And um, zero current wasted when we're turning the uh, green LED on, i.e. the stuff that's being powered from over here. Let's put the multimeter on there and double check that. Right, so the red LEDs on, and we're taking well, just just short of 14 milliamps. Now the green LEDs on, and zero current is flowing through that resistor for the green LED, which proves the fact that the MOSFET, of course, is blocking all that current as we'd expected. But there we are. So that's 100% great now for a battery pad project. The LED or whatever it is you're driving instead of an LED is only on when it should be on, and 
we're not wasting power through that double resistor to ground. Great, okay, this, is, this is it. Right, I was just having a look to see how much these were, and as you can see from LCSC, they're 83 cents a piece, but you probably want to buy at least five, I would have thought. And that little breakout board that I showed you, I got closer to home. Now that's 167 each. I got about half a dozen myself just for playing about with on breadboards. I mean, they're cheap enough. Now I have used the AO4606 as a drop-in replacement. Works just as well and uh, is even cheaper, would you believe? Okay, I think, I think we've explored this and we've seen that uh, for a few pennies we can add in this SI4599 or any dual MOSFET or two individual MOSFETs if you really want of your choice to make sure that the current flowing through this LED is only flowing when you want it to be flowing and not wasted uh, in a battery power project. If you're powering it from a wall water, it doesn't matter so much but even then you might be inclined to think no I want it working properly properly so you might introduce that as well and for the few pennies that this one costs it's probably well worth it yeah especially if you can solder that little tiny chip into your circuit and believe me it's it's just not that difficult okay i think we're done and dusted here hope you've learned something i wish i'd done this now in my smart heater controller rather than having two individual leds with you know basically three wires going in there but there we are. We live and learn. And the quiz answer was that Stop Right There was a hit for the Hollies, not the Spice Girls, which funnily enough I was thinking of as well. There we go. Okay, cool. I think we're done. So remember, comments down below if you've got any questions or comments generally. Perhaps you wouldn't have done it this way. You'd do it another way. Like using two GPIO pins. But remember, the premise for this was that I only had a single GPIO pin. Um, and if you liked it, don't forget to give it a good thumbs up because YouTube like that and it helps my channel. And I guess I'll be seeing you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.